Hello everyone and welcome to part two of our first ever Art Starts Explores Our Province at Play digital series. My name is Kay and I will be leading you through an hour of art making. Um, if you haven't had a chance, by the end of this session, I encourage you to go back and check out our YouTube video that introduces uh, framing and walks you through making your own viewfinder. If you don't have your viewfinder ready today for uh, today's session working together, that's okay, no problem. You can also make a viewfinder or frame something to look through, which just basically helps you figure out um, the, the borders of a scene. You can use your hands You can look around your apartment to find other things, or sorry, apartment, house, wherever you are currently um, living right now, you can go and look. If you're in the classroom, you can go and check. You can also find pieces of paper and cut out quickly your own viewfinder. And really, it's just a way of uh, creating a border for the scene so that when we're practicing framing, which when you watch the uh, YouTube video, you can get a sense of what framing um, is in a larger sense. But basically, we're practicing um, setting up a scene, containing it, and by using different techniques, we're helping to contain and compose the scene so that we are expressing emotion. So at the beginning of the session, I'm going to be doing quite a bit of talking. I've got a few stickies that will give some text prompts for those of you who might not be able to hear me um, from wherever you're streaming. And when the session is all done, we'll be sure to caption these videos. So for those of you who are watching live and you can't understand or hear my voice right now, I apologize for the uh, inconvenience. You are a priority to me. I will get the streaming sorted out and be sure that uh, at the end of this session, we will have an archived version with captions. To help this session uh, move along, we also have our program manager, Leah Horlick, who is in the comments. So if you have any questions at all, she'll be available to answer in real time um, and, and be sure to reach out or share or link to what you're making at home. Um, Explores really is about uh, collaboration and about trying things. So hopefully you and your family are able to take an hour out uh, to sit down and explore and play together because that's, that's really what art making should be. It should be about exploring and being inspired by other people. All right, so I'm gonna move away my talk bubble because we are started. I'm gonna get rid of this because we are started. And before we get right into the nitty gritty, if you've ever participated in any kind of Explorers programming before, you know that we like to follow uh, three rules when we do any of our public programming. And we call these the three rules of Explorers. So to start with, the first rule is respect. We like to practice respect. We're practicing art making and we are practicing respecting ourselves practicing um, respecting each other. And that's really important, especially right now, while a lot of us are trapped inside, while um, we're stuck inside, we're practicing social distancing. We haven't seen um, anybody outside of our immediate family or our guardians or our foster care. We, we're, we're starting to feel like we, we, wish, we wish we could get outside. And so practicing respect is really important. And that can be as easy as acknowledging that we need a nap, we need some alone time, so we need to go find a quiet space to be by ourselves. Um, respecting others is that they need quiet time or that they need a break. Um, so just listening and communicating and practicing uh, respecting ourselves and others. It means uh, respecting our tools. So if you are working with other people today and hopefully you've pulled in your siblings or your guardians or anyone else who you are isolating with, or if this is later and you're watching our archive stream and you're um, in the classroom, 
maybe another classmate or teacher is using a pair of scissors that you want to use. And so practicing with respect is also just waiting uh, for them to be finished. Or if you're using tools and you see somebody else is waiting, then maybe not dally and give them the scissors so they can do their thing. Or just communicate, ask them what they need. And if it's something fast, they can bring it back. Then finally, respecting the land. I would like to acknowledge, since I'm hosting our live stream, that I am hosting on unceded Coast Salish territory. And it's really important, even though we are existing in this digital space right now, to consider the, the land. We, we are safe inside. Um, hopefully, hopefully you are safe inside. I, I am lucky enough to have a house to be in right now. Um, but that the uh, the, the land that we are on, uh, how, we, how we treat it, the people who have been here, the nations who have been here since um, time immemorial, we, we want to thank them and acknowledge that this land is theirs and that we want to practice being good guests while we practice art making here. The second thing that we like to do when we, or that we, we challenge ourselves to do is that nothing is for keeps. These workshops are not about making one finished object. They're about trying multiple ways of thinking and creating. So that means that um, if you're starting to create a scene that's looking really good, sure, you could take a picture of it, but the idea is that at the end of our workshop, you're gonna put everything away again. Nothing is for keeps and if, uh, I, if you have a recycling bin, I absolutely encourage you to go and use materials from the recycling bin because what we're doing today is really about practicing. It's not about that finished product. And in practicing, there are no mistakes because we have no expectations. And so the, that one leads right into uh, rule number three, no expectations. That means that um, we don't really have an idea of exactly how something's going to turn out. Maybe when we start practicing, we've got an idea in mind. But try to keep it really, really loose because sometimes when we have a really focused vision, when we're still in this phase of prototyping or trying things out or exploring or playing with whatever we're going to make today, it can cause us to be really frustrated when things don't happen exactly the way we see them in our head. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to learn techniques together on how eventually uh, we know how to make those pictures in our head. But right now there's a lot of question marks and, and those are the things that we want to be trying and testing. Um, so ask a lot of questions when you're making today, when you're making any time, always ask what would happen if I, and just try things out. And that means that there really isn't any mistakes because there isn't any perfect goal. All right, so that's a whole bunch of talking out of the way. We're gonna get started. This is session two. If you haven't seen last week's session, that's okay. You can go back and check it out, but that's most of the talking that I'm gonna do and I'm mostly just going to create now. Try different things. If you have any questions, again, post them in the comments, but um, I'm going to explore uh, two, two different um, techniques in framing today. And again, I'm going to do what I did last week where, where I'm going to challenge myself with a prompt. So the theme is uh, framing, but I'm going to see if I can make a scene that looks like we are outside. And I'm going to use a technique in framing it's a French word called repoussoir. And so I'm just going to start making. And then at the end, when I've created something, um, I will explain to you what I am doing. But right now, this is the time to make. So let's start grabbing things and create a scene together.
Remember, I'm just trying things out. Sometimes things aren't gonna work and that's okay. No mistakes, no expectations. Just what will happen if I What's important when we're practicing framing is we know what our subject is, right? And so I'm trying to frame, I'm trying to put the focus on this person right here. And that's why I'm building things all around. And I've put them right in the center, like right in the middle, but you can put them off to the side. In fact, try that. If you have somebody sitting in a chair or you're sitting in a chair or you've put your toy somewhere, um, try putting them off to the right or bringing them really far forward, or bringing them to the side. Find out what happens. Just ask, what happens if I? Okay, I think I want something else back here. Oh, maybe I'll just use some of these scraps. plan. I don't know how this is going to turn out. I haven't given this any thought. I don't have any prepared stuff. I'm just checking what I have around the apartment, around my apartment, because I'm in, a part, in an apartment, but you're in a house. Check your recycling bin. Check your toy chest. Check your junk drawers. Junk drawers are really great for making the idea of a tree, maybe, maybe some trunks. Mm, I'll try blue. Can always move your subject too, right? The idea is that we want to focus on the subject. That doesn't mean you have to tell somebody to sit in a chair and you can't move now. You're the director. You're creating a scene. So you can pretend like this is a, um, a movie that you're making or a picture that you're creating. In fact, that's an important um, thing that I want to point out here. It kind of looks like we're playing and, and playing is really important, right? I, I, do, I do want to stress that if you're at home together and you're making art together, have fun, P play. That's, that's part of trying things. That's part of the no expectations is seeing what will happen and imagining and being creative and that's fun. But what we're doing is um, we're, we're crafting a scene using techniques that are fun. This, this does have an end goal, which is um, in when you make movies or when you um, make, uh, uh, when you're doing photography, when you're taking pictures, um, it can be really important to try and, and use these techniques so that people are paying attention to the thing that you want. And that becomes even more interesting when you move your subject or the thing that you want people to focus on um, in different directions. When you're watching a movie and something seems uh, really scary or really happy, um, the directors and the people that are thinking about these things and crafting these things, they've thought about where that person needs to be, where the person um, uh, who's watching it is paying attention. So instead, the, the way that this differs from just playing is that um, when you play, sometimes you're thinking about the toy that you're making the scene for. Um, maybe you've got a Barbie doll or a Transformer or an All-American girl and you've put them in the, the scene 
and you're pretending like they're going to work or like there's a dirt bike race or whatever it's going to be, you've created this thing and then you play by imagining that you're that person. The difference is, is that we're actually thinking about people who are going to see it. So it's not about you and the subject or the doll or the or, or, or what you are making, it's about people who are going to come and see your scene. And that's why the viewfinder becomes so important when we're doing framing, is that this is a way, this is a window that lets you see through the eyes of the people that you're crafting the scene for. And that's the difference between just playing with our toys and what we're doing today. All right, I really like this small one, but I'm gonna pull out my larger viewfinder. And if you'd watched our YouTube video, you would see that. I'm also gonna pull away the, can you make a scene that looks like we're outside? We are, I, this is, I feel good. This is my scene that's outside. And I pulled out my large viewfinder. Oh, I'm gonna pull out the subjects as well. And then we're gonna look through the viewfinder at the scene. Okay, so I told you that I was going to talk about the idea of the repoussoir. And the repoussoir, you can see in this little frame here, what I have is I have these kind of figures that are in the forefront. And here, when we're looking through the frame, you can see the bushes, and you can see the trees, and you can see the tree over here. And what that has done is it kind of, it creates a frame within a frame that makes your eyes want to look back at the central subject. And if you look at a lot of famous paintings, um, what they'll do is, is that they'll have like a figure or a person. In fact, actually, I think I have a second character. I'm gonna pull one over so I can show you. Here we go. This is my other figure that I created earlier. And I'm gonna, and maybe they've come into the scene and they want to join the picnic that is going on. And so what I'm doing is, you see, I'm not facing towards the audience because what I want to do is I want you to focus on the subject there. And so I'm taking this figure and I'm turning them towards the subject as if they're talking to each other as if they're having a conversation, as if this person is walking over to the subject. So you're still paying attention. The, the action is all still happening with that subject. So when I pull this in here, see this, oh, here, I'm going to bring it a little closer. This figure here does the exact same thing as that tree there, which kind of focuses you in on the center uh, figure, right? And so that's the idea of repoussoir, and in, um, in French, uh, pousser means to push. And so this is the idea of that we're pushing your eyes from the outside edge to the figure in the center. And so that's repoussoir. And uh, I feel really good about this scene. I, I think that this looks like um, that figure is outside. So I'm going to give myself a thumbs up, and I think we're going to try something new. So I'm going to pull all of this out. Figure's gonna walk off set. Thank you very much. Gonna take these away. You can also see um, I kept, uh, all I'm using are toilet paper rolls. And so um, I don't have as many toys around as I used to, but um, you probably have lots of toys, but these are just rolls like uh, paper towel rolls, toilet paper rolls. And they're real nice because they sit up straight. So if you're doing something in miniature like me, this is nice and cheap and easy. Um, and um, as far as it being clean, you're washing your hands before and after you go to the washroom. So when you're handling these, what you can do is, is that you can put them in, um, put them to the side for a week and then they'll be, they'll be ready to go um, as far as uh, the health, the current, just, just to give you an update of what I have researched, is that um, the C19 virus stays on cardboard only for three to four days. Um, so as far as quarantining, right, you're isolating your art objects. If you wanted to use these and be really safe about it, 
um, start collecting them at the beginning of the week and then put them to the side. And then by the end of the week, when we start art making together, if you wanted to use paper towels and toilet paper rolls, you could feel really good about using those. But there's lots of cardboard that collects. Um, you can see here, I've got some soda pop um, containers. I live with somebody who really likes soda pop, so there's lots of that cardboard that sticks around. Um, I also really, really, really like tea. And so if you watch the video that I made uh, before the viewfinder that I made was out of um, a box of Chinese poor tea. And so look at that circle. Isn't that circle great? This, this is all from my recycling bin. I didn't even have to cut that circle. Ooh. Now I have this really, really cool frame that's in a circle. So I love, I love the recycling bin. I, I can't get enough of cardboard. It's so useful. It's nice and strong. So as far as when you want to create um, backgrounds or objects, and uh, if, you, if you come and visit us um, when the gallery reopens, you can see that uh, we've made a bunch of things out of cardboard. There's a sewing machine that, um, that I created that was completely out of cardboard. Cardboard is such a great material. In fact, the gallery that we are standing, well, that we are pretending to stand in right now, it's all made out of cardboard as well. I just painted it white. Okay, so that was a repoussoir. The next thing that we are going to try out is um, something called white space. And you'll hear, as you get older, or if, uh, for the adults that are listening in, um, white space is one of those design aesthetics or ideas or ways of practicing art that is very contemporary or modern. And that means just that it's used a lot now um, to, to uh, create mood. And so what we're going to do is, is we're going to practice white space, but we're going to take the challenge of can we make a scene feel private? or secluded. And so private is that whole idea of, you know, private time when you go up into your room and you want to be private, or maybe you have, you have your best friend over and you want to tell them a secret, but you don't tell it to them at the dinner table while everybody else is sitting around, you want to take them somewhere private. So can we make a picture or a scene that feels private? So just like before, I'm going to turn off my voice and I'm going to just start making. And I hope you can try this too. Can you make a scene that feels private or secluded? Actually, maybe I'll bring the other guy back in. Two subjects.
remember with the viewfinder, the cool thing is, is that we can put things off to the side, right? It's going to be cropped out. It's going to, so as far as, you know, putting your lampshades or your uh, floor lamps to the side or um, actually taping something to the side of the walls or whatever you're going to do, um, you can put them off to the side and they'll be cropped out. They'll be cut out. They'll be blocked out by the frame at the end. So yeah, you can you can really use things out to the side and just make sure that they're out of the scene when you're creating it. And all of a sudden they become structure, they become a wall, they become something you can do. So I'm I'm gonna tape, I'm gonna tape some string to my floor lamps here. It's okay that I use bright blue tape because nobody's gonna see this. Maybe I'll put this at the forefront over here. Can I do that? Oh, no, I do actually need it to be over here. If you're using a real floor lamp, it's gonna be a lot more secure and heavy so that when you put, um, string or material or maybe a string of lights that you have maybe you've got your christmas lights oh christmas lights because lights can create a lot of mood as well when you're framing what happens if you put christmas lights around the outside of your frame what does that do especially if you change up the colors or what happens if you hang them up high or hang them low what happens if you bring them really close to your viewfinder or really close to your subject those are some good questions to ask and say what will happen if? Okay, I need some white paper. Got some over here. I'm working at my home studio, so I have lots and lots of stuff just laying around, but I'm trying not to use anything that you wouldn't have in your own house or apartment or classroom. Um, uh, this, for, for me, for my scene, Yes, I had a tree sculpture. I like to work in cardboard. This is cardboard again. Um, so I just decided I would grab this since we're doing a scene that's all in white. But maybe there is a sculpture that's in your stairwell or maybe there's a snow globe or maybe there's something um, that is a ready-made in your house that you can pull into those scenes. I'm not going to go into too much detail about ready-mades because I talked about them last. But yeah, you can always use a ready-made. Okay, so I've now made paper that's the same size as our subjects. I'm gonna fold this up. Don't forget, I really love scraps, so if there's some way that you can reuse scraps from what you're cutting and what you're making, always try and use that. Texture is always great to add to your scenes. There's a weird shape. That's okay. Ooh, I can practice ripping. This is another thing. If you've ever been in one of my workshops, you know I love ripping. So at home, it's a little bit different than when you're practicing in the gallery or in a public space. Make sure you have permission. But again, if you're using stuff from the recycling bin, it's already on its way out. It's already going to be something that you're going to throw out. So you probably have permission to rip up things that are in the recycling bin. And if you are frustrated and you want to go and run and it's been raining and you're stuck inside, sometimes just ripping up paper can feel really, really good. 
I'm going to put this over to the side because some of you might know what I want to do. But I'm going to, yeah, there. Okay, so that's a better shape. Not perfect the same time for the first time and that's okay you can always go back and try things change things up doesn't have to be perfect I don't know what this is gonna look like I had no plans okay Ooh. it's heavy it's heavy for the materials that I have this might not work but that's okay oh there we go okay so for this one I wanted to go really 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 simple because uh, not only are we practicing white space um, but the scene, I wanted it to be private and secluded. And, and for this one, what happened was in my head, I thought maybe these two characters, these two subjects were going to go outside and they were going to go somewhere where there was nobody around, where it was really peaceful and quiet. Um, there's not even animals around. So I'm going to, going to move this. This is what we tried to do. Can you make a scene feel private and secluded? And I'm going to move the subjects subjects that are in the center, the thing that we're trying to focus on. Put this over here and I'm going to pull out the viewfinder. Oh, I'll put white space to the side for a second and then I'm going to talk more about white space. But right now we're going to focus through our viewfinder. Oh, there we go. And we've got this quiet little space, this private secluded space. There's nobody around. It's just white. It's just snow. And of course, because I ripped up that paper and it felt so good. We can also make it snow, right? Because we're practicing being movie makers. And so now it's snowing in that scene. Okay, so the reason that I wanted to craft this up um, using just white things was because practicing white space doesn't actually just mean making a white space. Um, it's okay if you, if you thought that that's what it was and that technically this is a white space. This is a space that is white. But as far as the art practice that is about white space, it can also be said another way, which is called negative space or space where there's nothing around, where we really clear a lot of things out. So I brought over the, my cardboard tree because I wanted it to look like a scene, but I want to take this out. Oh, very slowly, so I don't knock, knock everything away. Okay, so I've moved that out of the way. And then I want to see if when I pull, look through the viewfinder, if it still looks as quiet and intimate and private and potentially barren or... So what I was going for was a really kind of white, um, spare, uh, uh, spare space. There, there isn't a lot around. Um, it's really just the two characters that we are focusing on, and it gets kind of tense if you think about it, right? We're, we're trying to just have those two people there. Do you need the tree to still do the same thing? So here, I'm going to grab those. Does it still look like an intimate, quiet, snowy screen? I, I don't know. What do you think? Does it still look like that? And then even, even more so, take away even more of the clutter. Okay, so snowflake number one, snowflake number two. And this is a good way to practice as well. Like load up your scene, put everything you can possibly think of in the scene, put it around your teddy bear, put it around your parent that you've put in that chair, put it around your brother, um, stack up fabric all over the place, turn on all the lights, and then take things away one at a time. 
to see if that changes what, what you're trying to do. Okay, so all I have now is the white snow and a white background. Does it still look private? Does it still look intimate? Does it still look kind of stressful? It's only those two. I know, I know they're smiling. I mean, if you were a director, maybe you'd tell your subjects to stop smiling because you're trying to create this quiet, tense, private space. But does it still look intimate and close and private? And I think it does. And so what, what white space kind of lets you do is really focus on the only objects that are in the scene and that makes it really intimate and close. There's nothing else to distract you. Really, your eyes can only focus here. And if you were imagining this as a TV screen or your um, iPad, and remember, we're building this for an audience. Sure, we're having fun. Sure, we're playing with our family. Sure, we're art making. But if we imagine ourselves, we've, we've been the directors of the movie, we send our movie clip to the audience, to our best friends. They're all watching our movie. Are they getting the sense that they have to focus? Are they focusing on the snow? Are they focusing on the background? Or are they focusing on the subjects and what's potentially being said or the looks that are being exchanged between the two of these? And that's one of the ways we can practice white space for framing. Okay. So I'm going to clear this up again. We're going to try one more prompt. I've got about 15 minutes left in the workshop. Hopefully you're trying different things at home. If they don't look anything like this, if you tried something and it turned out really, really great and you want to share it, let us know. If you tried something and it turned out really, really bad and you want to share it, let us know. There's, you know what? I really like seeing things that are unexpected, things that didn't follow what you wanted. Maybe they don't look great, but that's how we discover new ways of making. That's how we, we learn. And sometimes when you share those things with other people, they learn to not do it themselves. And then all of a sudden they, they can focus on a new way of making because they, they, you've already answered the question, what happens if I... All right, so let's see, what else, what else are we going to practice as far as framing is concerned? We've practiced white space, we've practiced repoussoir, what are we going to do now? Maybe we won't do either of those, maybe we're just going to see how we can make a scene look underwater. Oh, I know what we'll do, we'll practice depth of field. So again, we brought this up last week, so I'm not going to go into it too much. I'm just going to see how can we make a scene look underwater. So again, I'm going to turn off my voice for a little bit as I craft the scene, turn on some music. Hopefully you're making something um, at home or just getting some ideas. Maybe you're writing some notes. Note making is really great. Um, sometimes you don't have time or access to your materials and you've got a really good idea. Draw it out. If you don't have a piece of paper, draw it in the sand. If you don't have um, time to do it right now, draw it out and write down all of your ideas so that when you sit down, you can, or just ask questions. What happens if I, and that's enough. Next time you want to make something and you don't know what to make, you can pull out your list of questions that you made from another time and just start answering them. Okay, voice off for real, and let's see if we can make a scene look underwater.
And chair and oh, I want I want it to look like I'm swimming oh, my base might be too big that's okay I'll pat my base down so because I'm using a, a, a fake figure and I can make these edits, but if you wanted, you you were the director and you tell your your friend, your neighbor, your parent that they need to get in a chair and look like they're swimming, uh, it's really hard for them to balance, then how do you fix that? How do you help them? All right, there we go. There we go. It's kind of on the side. All right. I think we're underwater, so this needs to be up high. Remember, it's off to the side. Nobody's going to see that, so I'm just going to weigh that down. I really like that shape, though. Well, just because it's underwater, I don't know if it means that you can't have any, any waves. Oh, that's a good question. How can you make it look like there's waves deeper? I'm going to go maybe like that. Don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know. Is this gonna turn out good? Whatever you're making right now, who knows if it's gonna turn out good. Remember, we're not aiming for good. We're what aiming for what happens if I what happens if I cut up this into waves? Will it still look like it's underwater? What happens when I use a t-shirt as my background? What happens when I make my sister sit on a chair or lay on a chair and tell them to swim maybe maybe they've already told me oh i can't i'm tired you don't need to, you can tell them they can stop you don't need to swim until you're ready to take your picture what's the other thing like you know what let's pretend this is actually a movie that we're making and the actors or the subjects they wouldn't be on scene yet maybe maybe we'd have the chair because we know that's where the subject is going to sit they will sit there but it would be really exhausting if we had them swim all the time. Maybe they're still in makeup, right? Let's pretend that this is for real. We're making a movie. And so our actors are off right now in their makeup chair, getting um, made to look like a mermaid or an octopus or Aquaman or whatever it is. They're off and they're getting their makeup done. So what we are doing is, is we are crafting the scene. We're making the scene so it looks like it's underwater. I don't want to exhaust them. I want them to be fresh when they come in later. Oh, I think I, I think it's off to the side, so it's not really going to fit. That's okay. Does that still look like water? Well, we'll see. Maybe, oh, maybe that can cover the chair. Oh, okay, there we go. So still underwater. Um, what else? What else could I add? Oh, maybe a fish? 
take that tree trunk that I built earlier and uh, I don't know. That's a good way to check that you're, you're really pushing the what happens if I, if you can say, I don't know a lot. Because if you go, oh yeah, I know, I know what will happen if I do that, then, then whatever, you already, you already know what's going to happen. That's, that's different than what we're trying today. We're trying, what if, we're trying to explore, we're exploring art making. All right, there we go. Maybe I'll add an eye. It looks... Uh, where's my marker? There it is. There's my fish. And so adding, adding props, not just scenes, but like figures. So in this case, fish. But if you were going to be outside, maybe a bird or... Um, Actually, that's just a good question. What do you need to add to your scene beyond just objects or scenery that makes it look more like you, uh, where you're trying to craft your scene? Okay, so I've got my fish and, oh, my artist is ready for makeup or it has come in for makeup. This is the scene we're trying to do. I'm gonna pull that out of the way just so we can focus. Oh, you look, you look so good. Your makeup is amazing. We're just gonna pretend, but. Your makeup looks so amazing. Thank you for being ready for our scene. And they're in the scene now. And we're going to pull out our viewfinder. Oh, where's my viewfinder? Pull it out right here. Oh, I'm gonna pull out subjects as well because that kind of takes us out of the scene. Oh, that's stuck to the fabric. Ah! What happens if it all falls apart? That's okay. We're gonna put our actor over here. Oh, they're so frustrated. Things happen, you try and explain to them, it's okay, these things happen. We'll get it fixed up in five minutes, supremo water actor person. And they're all frustrated and you're all flustered because you wanna try and do it as fast as possible. Your mom and dad said that they were, or your sister said that they, was, they were only gonna be in the scene for five minutes, so you gotta go fast. But that's okay, we can do this. And what happens if, what happens if everything falls apart? You have to, you have to problem solve. You have to find solutions. And that's part of art making as well. Art making teaches us these skills and the things that we learn when we practice and make art are important beyond just artists. They're for everybody. Problem solving, being creative, that's, that's an important tool and an important skill that, that most people wish they had. Look at, look at that. In under a minute, all worked out, fixed up. Our actor can come back onto the scene. All right, fine, I'm ready to go. It's all good. All right, there. Move this out of the way a little bit. And then look, where are we underwater? Okay, so I wanted to show you just one more technique because this isn't just about crafting a scene. It isn't this really cool. Um, when we introduce a lens, um, so whether you're looking through your iPad or a camera lens or, um, or just anything, you know, your viewfinder, anything that has a rectangle that gives you a frame, you have the ability to make changes here and not just in your scene. So the scene is all done. This is what they call practical effects, right? But then you have things called visual effects, and those are things that you can use on your computer, that you can use um, with filters. Um, so you take this picture and all of a sudden you have this library of filters that you can do. But I'm going to show you one more practical effect that we're going to do to the screen here. And that is, where did I put? So when you're going through your recycling bin, you may come across some plastic in here. Did I put it over here? Sorry, I put it away from my scene, so I'm gonna pull this over. So maybe you're gonna find some plastic. So the front cover of a set of tools, um, maybe you got a new toy and it had a hard plastic to the front. And what you can do is, is you can cut away 
that from the container until you have kind of a flat piece. And so for me, I was lucky I had an acetate sheet, so I was able to use this. And I'm going to, I'm gonna just tape this to my viewfinder. Real fast. All right, so. I got that plastic and you know other than a shine and that's cool too right like how does the light translate maybe you can have something over here that it reflects so that adds one element but then what happens if I grab a blue marker and I'm gonna draw maybe some circles because I want to create some bubbles And all of a sudden, we've got this trick because this is over here now. And so you're still focusing on the thing in the center, but this gives us the idea that we have to travel through other layers of information. And so the information is these bubbles and that there's maybe some rising air coming out of the water here. There's one other trick that we can do, which is we can actually just add water to the camera. So you have to get permission for this, right? This isn't for everybody. But because I'm using plastic, I'm going to spray. Check this out. All right. So I've added actual water. Now, now you've got real water as far as looking like you are underwater. And you can tell, right, you can see again, I'm always using my viewfinder to move back and forth to see, make the screen or the scene wider make this scene get really, really close. And how does that make you feel as the viewer? Does that make you feel more um, interested in the subject? Does that make you feel nervous for the subject? Does that make you feel happy for the subject? Ask yourself, pretend to be the audience that you're shooting for. Um, if you sent this to your friend, if you asked your mom to come check out the scene, what do you think or what, what do you want to try and encourage them to feel when they see your picture or movie? Okay, so that was Art Starts Explores Framing Part 2. We are one minute away from 12, so that was an hour of art making together. Thank you so much for everybody who popped in today or stayed for the entire session. Next Saturday, we'll be starting with a new theme, so be sure to check back in with us from 11 to 12. Schedule that hour of art making, playing, and exploring with your family together. And if you have any questions at all about today's session, on the theme of framing, or just about how to set up time and space to create at home, please give us a shout by leaving a comment on today's video. Thank you so much.